I believe that video was a few minutes too long. <laughs> so we're going to give you a visually rapid glimpse into our design process, our thoughts, and our hyper-collaborative hyper way we do things. Um, and we're going to start where we all started, um, as kids. So when we were all children, we painted, we did art, and we used all the colors in the paint box, not just black, gray, or white. But when we got to architecture school, this is what they taught us was beautiful. And they gave us the motto, form follows function. And it followed it right over the cliff of public <laughs> opinion. So architects, even when we do use color, we use it in a really restrained sort of way, almost a clever way. We use it in a way so that it's somewhat hidden. And that's probably why we're often so popular with the common man. <clears throat> um, when we design cities, we are trained to design cities that are made out of glass, green glass, gray glass, large, large projects that look like they're built by robots, um, and it looks like a video game. But the architects who ignore their training do work like this. This is Gaudí's Park Well in Spain, where the framework of the flowing serpent bench becomes a way to project society's goals and hopes and artistic dreams and just a place to sit. A lot of us, I think, especially after last week, have forgotten that we need places of joy. We, we want to say today, really, that color, that expression, happens in the artificial environment as well, almost as strongly as in the natural environment. Um, when we toured the world a number of years back, we saw a number of different environments, and you can see Santorini on the bottom left. There is not a tree in that image, and yet it's as beautiful and as colorful as the image in the bottom right, which is from Kyoto, Japan. So our, our desire is to really try to bring color and expression into everything we do. In the next century, more cities are going to be designed, be created, and be expanded than at any other time in human history. So today we have a really modest prediction, the Tamara and VK original prediction for cities. And our prediction is that in the 21st century, cities will still be designed by organic life forms not robots. And our proposal is, let's make sure that things look like they are. So, to hell with the machine age is our dictate. <clears throat> uh, what we want to talk about now are two projects. Um, one that's very close by and you have seen, another project that we had done as a competition, and just give you a glimpse into the way we solicit information to make sure that our designs are diverse and interesting. Oops, go back. So this is a diagram of the way that we work, and most architects actually use the yellow and the pink um, to create an idea for the buildings. They look at the clients, and they look at the space that the building is gonna be in. But we try to add that part that's about the emotion. What are you gonna feel when you go there? Um, how, what is it gonna express? And we'll show that in each of these works. So the first project was a competition that Mayor Bloomberg announced about a year ago for micro-unit housing in the city of New York. Um, and we had been doing a little bit of research at Ad Inc. up here in Boston for micro-unit housing. You may have seen some of the models that we had made full scale that were positioned around the city. But the thought was that we wanted to develop housing that New Yorkers and Boston, Bostonians would really use, smaller housing for emerging professionals. And um, many of our emerging professionals from our office are in the audience who participated in that research project. So we started this project the way we start all of our projects. We crowdsourced. We went out, we listened, we got as much information as we could get. Um, and what we found, of course, was affordability was an important thing, living in the city, and in some kind of expressive, colorful way. So we came up with a concept, and our concept was the Coral Reef, a sustainable shelter that provides a home for colorful fishies. And then, <laughs> We identified what those fish were, and we decided to give the fish, the concept, and one of the units in the building that we were designing to 15 different people in our office. So a series of interior designers, architects, and graphic designers took the basic unit, which is a very simple um, box with a little 
bed alcove and designed it so that they could live there. And it was a test. How would they be able to transform their own little tiny 250 square foot unit? And these are some of them, Derek. How do you design around a wingy scorpion? <laughs> <laughs> and use all IKEA because that's what they told us they would do. Keep it affordable. So then after that, we came up with a structure to organize all the units in the building. And these are really the social spaces. It's very similar to some of the residence halls we designed for students, where you have social space sprinkled all the way up. It builds community, a sense of being, a sense of why you're all there together. And we worked on an elevation that was reminiscent of a coral reef. It was colorful, but somewhat restrained, a beautiful shelter. This was the, one of the images that came out of that. This is right down near Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan. It's surrounded by gray buildings, so there's a very colorful facade on it. And then to complement that, we had a wonderful um, kind of pedestrian path that went through the city. Six months after we submitted it, Mayor Bloomberg and his team picked this. Obviously, without the benefit of having listened or seen our TED Talk. <laughs> The robots have designed it, the robots have built it, and the robots have won. So the second and last project we want to show is the Mass Art New Residence Hall, which many of you know it's in the neighborhood. Um, and we looked at both the, the clients, who are wonderful students and faculty at Mass Art, the context being the Avenue of the Arts, and then this emotion, which is youth and joyousness and experimentation. And you know the context, um, but one of the things that we heard over and over again is that there, the black tower that they inherited at the campus did not say anything about them. It was the wrong signifier. So we held an 85-person charrette, okay. yep. where we involved students and faculty and administration, and they told us directly, a direct quote, make it look like a painting in the skyline so that you can see it from a distance and know that mass art is here. So we had two concepts for the project. Um, we presented them both. They came out of concepts that we had developed with some of the students. The one that rose to the top was the Tree of Life. And this is a painting by Gustav Klimt in 1902. And it's about rebirth, energy, expression. And we worked to try to design a building that evoked those emotions that that painting had. And you can see we took the metaphor of a tree. This is a sketch that's Mar and I, one of 50 that we did to make it look like a more organic form. And you can see the mayor. We brought two options to the mayor, just in case. <laughs> and he said, famously, you're an art school on the Avenue of the Arts. Shouldn't you look like one? And so he's picked the more expressive scheme to match all the opinions of the students and the faculty in the community. He got the why. And then what we do when we take one of those concepts and we have it and it has some residents is we just push it through every single detail in the building. This is the bark-like skin that the building has. And you can see the colorful panels that represent really a tree in autumn changing color from the base to the top of the tree as it does. This is the, uh, the building in its context and on the left is the wonderful landscape architecture work of Ground Inc. and Shauna Gilly Smith. And it really speaks to the, that the building represents the mission of mass art, um, that the building needs to be artistic, the landscape needs to be artistic, and then what fills the building, which are five commissioned artwork in various floors on the building, are done by the alumni of mass art. And that as a way to say to the city, couldn't all buildings have some aspect of, of this as an art? institution. We also wanted to make sure the building was shared by the other buildings on campus. So these are views from the other Mass Art residence halls on campus. Um, this is a beautiful view at night and then a view looking down the Avenue of the Arts. And we want to end here, which is where we began, which is that kids and all of us as kids really find incredible intrigue and joy in color and texture and movement and in art. And why can't our cities be like that? And we urge you to remember that cities are authored by all of us. We are all clients, we are all designers, and that we have to push our architecture teams, our client teams, to really try to find the joy of life and bring it into built form. Thank you very much. Thank you.